signing on with us. I want to encourage you, as we always do, to share information about our broadcasts or video on your Facebook page and tell others. Those of you that are on the phone on our conference call, we welcome you as well. Uh, thank you for using our uh, conference call line. And we trust that all of this opportunity will be a blessing to you. We have a sense of a great uh, message for us today. And truly believe that the hand of God, the life of God, the anointing of God is with us as we start this time and as we share this time together. So I believe that as you, as you open your heart and your spirit to receive what it is that God has in store for you personally, you'll be blessed as a result of having this time with us together today. I want to take a minute to say hello to my precious wife of 52 years. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. You want to go ahead and say good morning? Good morning, good morning. So glad to be here. Glad to be alive. Glad to be in the land of the living. <laughs> amen, amen. Okay, so what we want to do today is first and foremost, I want to make a special point. Now, to, we're going to talk about the two sides of hope. This will be part three. We'll probably wrap up this part of the series and start a new series at our next time together. But before we even get to that, I want to take this time to have a special time of prayer. I was involved with the City of Hazel Park Council meeting by Zoom last week. And in the course of that discussion, uh, they also indicated to me that uh, uh, they would appreciate it if we pray for the city, pray for the city. And so of course, and we're gonna take this special time. I trust that maybe you're watching Ed and Diane or either Andy, Mike, if you all are, or Aubrey, Amy, if you all are watching, God bless you. We, we're grateful that uh, you are doing the work that you do for the city of Hazel Park. And then we'll extend our prayer for the other cities that are part of the community of this portion of southeastern Michigan and believe God's hand and blessing. We are going through a, a, a very unusual time in, uh, in this land, in this city, in this state, in this nation, and therefore it becomes critically important for us to continue to look to the face of God, look to the power of God, look to the even the word of God to give us courage and confidence that as this season passes there will be residue issues and things that need to be dealt with and we believe the hand of God is on our cities and on our people in the cities we might not agree with everything that's going on but it's still our city and we trust that God will guide in the course of the future that's coming on. So will you join us, connect with us, put your heart, mind, spirit into this prayer time with us. And then after that, we'll have a music selection by Pastor William Lane. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we lift our voice to you in the name of Jesus to say that we thank you for this day. We look into your word and we see that you declare that the day, this is the day that you've made. And as a result of that, we determine to rejoice and be glad in this day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we also receive from your word that at the beginning of every day, you provide for us new mercy, new opportunity, new grace to help us be able to go forward and fulfill what it is that you desire to happen in our lives, in our families, in our communities, in our cities, in our state, in our nation, and even, yes, in this world that's going on around us. We thank you that you help us look to you, that you help us find insight and information from you and from your word that helps us be able to go forward 
and do the things that will provide blessing and strength and power especially to our families and our family units we ask you in Jesus name to provide the protection the peace and the provision that's necessary in order for us to live our lives in such a way that we receive and embrace your blessings and then uh, uh, conduct ourselves in such a way that your blessings flow out of us to be able to bless the lives of others. Thank you for this special time together that you've given us opportunity to share your word and share this message today, share this time today, and to share your great love today. Thank you as you lead us together, as you strengthen us, give us wisdom to know how to go forward in a way that's going to be a blessing to others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Alleluia. Amen. 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 So now we're going to be blessed by musical selection by Pastor William Lane. Living God enduring 
forever and his kingdom will not be destroyed and his dominion is forever and ever he is king of glory over heaven and earth hallelujah hallelujah for the lord god the almighty reigns in majesty he rules with wisdom power and authority over all over all power and authority over all Awesome God, awesome God that we serve. Well, thank you, Pastor Lane. And I pray that you'll hear the power and the insight that's in those particular music selections because they bring us to the reminding place of who's really in charge and who really will make a difference and who will get us through these situations. Who will? guide our lives each and every day and no matter what's going on around us the power of God the wisdom of God the authority of God reigns over all in Jesus name amen 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 all right well listen we're going to do this particular e-word for today the two sides of hope part three and 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 we have this earnest determination to look at the concept of being able to stay in faith, the power of staying in faith, the necessity of staying in faith. And before we get into those, we're going to cover uh, Psalm number 121. We're going to do scripture out of the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 5 around verse 36, 37, somewhere around in there. And then also the gospel according to Luke at chapter uh, 8. We're going to look at verse 50 in that area. So just give you a little heads up. But before we go to that part, we talked about, uh, Mrs. Scott, we talked about, uh, let's share some thoughts about what have we been learning over this particular time period that's been around us over these past several weeks. So why don't you go ahead and share I just wanted, insights. Go I ahead. just wanted to say how I really enjoyed you and my daughter last week. <laughs> that was a blessing, blessing, hey, blessing. Your baby girl. baby girl. Yeah, <laughs> we did a throwdown. She's the only woman I have to take a back seat to Oops, every now well, and then. <laughs> you know, hey, hallelujah. But that Amen. was a blessing. Good. But anyway, Good. so um, what were we, what was, Remind me the question again. You say, what have we been learning? Oh, what have over we been learning? Woo. Situations over these. You know, it seems like these weeks, weeks have gone fast, and mm -hmm. then at sometimes it seems like they've gone so slow. Mm -hmm. But it's only been eight weeks. About oh, eight weeks. Feels like forever. <laughs> it feels like forever. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably on only going to be another two weeks, maybe, mm -hmm. till the end of uh, May. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time. Memorial Day comes, people are probably going to be out, <laughs> out, 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 you know. But a um, couple things that I've been, you know, when it first started, I was able to just, okay, what is God saying? Mm -hmm. You know, what in the world is going on? Yes. So it was easy to say, stop and take a spiritual look. But then as things changed in the natural, mm -hmm. you know, uh, activities changed. Uh, just, you know, whole lifestyle kind of changed. And uh, then... Well, well changed to the point of coming to a screeching halt, actually. Or well, for that, me, what? you know, I'm from the country, so, okay. you know, mm? I'm a little different. Go ahead. <laughs> for me, it didn't really... I didn't stop a whole lot of stuff because I didn't... I wasn't into a lot of things that were... Oh. 
in the area where I needed to stop. You know, I okay. don't go to work. Mm -hmm. So, and then I'm not around a lot of people except for church. Mm -hmm. so that was the only screeching halt because like when I go outside, it's, I go outside a lot or, you know, I would go to the park or whatever. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really around people a lot. And then I know the peak hours at the stores that I frequent. Mm -hmm. So I know when there are a lot of people there and, lot, and not a lot of people, so I would just wait. Okay. So I, that part for me didn't change. Okay. The part for me that changed that was the most excruciating was the part of not being able to see uh, friends and members at church mm -hmm. and not being able to, for our children to come here or us to go there. Mm -hmm. um, Houston, you mean, Houston. Houston, mm -hmm. yes. yeah. So that for me was extremely... Um, stressful, not extremely, but that was the most stressful part. Mm -hmm. But what through the, so after I got through that, um, I had to stop and say, you know, and when you get in that momentum of not having what you want, okay, you say, okay, well, why can't I have what I want? Mm -hmm. And so then all these outside pressures were causing me to have distress. Oh, okay. Okay, you know, because I couldn't do what I want to. I didn't have any of the other issues. And so I thought, okay, this is outside. So then I start looking, you know, looking at the government, looking at, um, looking at uh, people and how they were responding to the government or looking at the political parties and start looking at all of that. But what happened was, you know, all of that stuff was got to be irrelevant mm -hmm. until I got to the part where okay, God, if you are truly controlling my life, All right. I need to stop and, and, and get my position in you. Oh, oh, okay. And that totally changed then how I thought about the outside people. Oh. You know, so once I personalized it and said, you know, okay, God, you knew this. This is no big deal to you. So what am I supposed to learn in this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to... Uh, do in this mm -hmm. and how am I supposed to act and that totally changed my reference one of the things I learned was my heart was exposed to me oh okay. just like I always said okay if I had time I would clean this I would organize this I would call this person I would send cards or do this and the opportunity presented itself, I had time. <laughs> what yes. I found out was, I really didn't want to do the cleaning. Uh oh. Because <laughs> after four or five weeks, yeah. I still hadn't done a whoa, thing. Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> so. Now, if, excuse me, excuse me. It's not like. <laughs> it ain't filthy. It's not like our house is no. a mess, <laughs> mind you. Please, you know. It's just that I, I go to the store and bring in, but I don't take back out, mm -hmm. even though I think I give away a lot. But anyway, so I found out my heart. Hmm. You know, I had a lot of excuses for not calling people, for not sending cards. But then when this thing came, I had the time. Oh, okay. And didn't do it. And just like, it used to be like um, coming to church, I was like, oh, got to go do this because, you know, we want the people to be blessed and be happy. But what I found out w was, was I doing it out of obligation hmm. or was it I doing it because I wanted to? Oh, and so, so my heart was exposed. And um, just like, did I, do I try to bless my children because I'm obligated to? Because you know, you can get in a, a rhythm of life mm -hmm. and you just do things. Mm -hmm. But during this time, I was able to slow down and say, oh, I miss my children. Okay. I miss my friends. I miss our fellowships. You know, I miss church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So hopefully when it comes back, I won't look at it as an obligation. I got to go get dressed. You yes. know, I got to do this. And that. No, I get to. Mm -hmm. So this this time has really exposed my heart to me. OK, it's taken away a lot of my excuses. Ooh. All right. Well I, well, I trust and pray and you can choose to relate or examine even in the inside of your own self as to what did you learn? What kind of things did you notice during this particular time frame that 
presented to you uh, an awareness of dealing with challenge or dealing with the inside of yourself and what have you. And I think that that's very, very important. Uh, as for me and how I assess or analyze uh, this particular time period, uh, even for myself, and of course, I'm, I'm going to have a couple of different sides to the process, meaning one from the pastoral side, uh, and then yet from the personal purity, my personal relationship with God's side. Uh, and there was learning opportunities in both of them. So let me do the personal side first in terms of, of uh, the kinds of thought processes I went through, the kinds of, of areas that were challenging to me uh, during over this time period. And one of the biggest ones, and the ones that came up early on, was to be able to deal with this matter of my own personal sense of, of understanding what was going on. Uh, all through my life, I mean, gee, from a young child on, I've, I've had an awareness of God, had a sense of the things of God. I mean, boom, that's why I've anointed and called to preach and teach, but I'm still uh, uh, a man. I'm, I'm still a father. I'm still a husband, still a brother, et cetera, et cetera. And in the course of this particular season that we've just gone through, one of the early on challenges that I came to have to deal with was to not allow myself to be carried away in all of the, the noise and all of the information that was coming in all different directions, primarily the drive towards this business about fear, uh, and this whole, this whole uh, virus situation and, and this and that, uh, to the extent that uh, uh, it was either one morning or or one, one time during the course of the day, I, I either felt something or had a little cough. And then, and then, then my mind started, uh-oh, you know, did you, did you catch something? Uh, check your fever. Are you feeling bad? And, and I started to just go crazy in terms of, oh, suppose that I did get it. Now I can run back, see who, where have I been and who have I been with. And then, the, then I had to stop myself and say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You know, number one, don't let this fear talk get onto the inside of yourself that you start focusing on the fear, you start in, inviting the fear, analyzing the fear, and then you start feeling the things that the fear said that you're supposed to feel. And uh, uh, so then I had to, to, to check myself and say, wait a minute, uh, what, 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 what do you believe? I had to ask me, what do you believe about God's ability to provide for you, to keep you, to protect you? What has God said? for your life, I mean me, my personal self. And I know, <laughs> I know my time is not up. I know God has not sent some kind of disease or some kind of virus to wipe me out. Hmm? And, and, uh, and so uh, th then, then I started giving consideration to um, points and places of I'll use the expression, good information. And by that I mean, um, I was listening to Dr. Charles Stanley the other night, and he was talking about how important it is for people to be willing to receive good and wise counsel. And so now I'm going to shift just a little bit to the pastoral aspect of my reaction to what has been going on. Wow, one of the biggest surprises for me overall in this entire 
uh, situation in this entire time frame of these six, seven, eight weeks is, it, is that it fascinates me how quick people who call themselves people of God so quickly set aside the things that God has declared and spend more time focusing on the noise and the fear mongering that's going on in the world order. And uh, then, then, then in relationship to appreciating good counsel, good information, listen, Dr. Caroline Leaf, we listen to and study after, and, and in many other places, uh, Dr. Avery Jackson and what have you, they put forth this realization. Fear weakens your immune system. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fear weakens your immune system. And for those people that we've heard that relate to this big disease situation and virus situation, one of the main things that the, quote, doctor, hospital kind of people, they talk about, one of the things that you need to do is build your immune system. Oh, so, so look at the contradiction. The, the noise and the fear mongering weakens your immune system, which then in essence opens the door and gives this virus situation more room to uh, function and what have you. And yet, then they turn around and say, well, if you get it, build up your, your immune system. Now listen. You may be from the country. I, I'm a little city boy, but uh, my mom, my mom, my mom and them told me that if you know the situation, why don't you do it before you need it? Come on. And then when you need it, you won't need it. Right. So we should be focusing on building up immune systems anyway. We should be dealing with vitamins anyway. We should be dealing with exercise anyway. We should be dealing with proper rest anyway, instead of running around, worried, uh, about, worried about fear, and worrying about all of this other stuff. And, and so, and, 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 and watch this too now. And of course, may, maybe, maybe I need to pay attention to how I say this, but the power of God is greater than a vaccine. Mm -hmm. Amen. The power of God is greater than some particular pharmacy or yeah. pill. Huh? The gospel is the greatest pill <laughs> for anything. So then, well, where are you going with all that? Well, as a pastor and from the pastoral aspect of my uh, response and, and, and the knowledge of these uh, past weeks is to say, how important it is for us to go back and consider one more time what do we really believe about God Amen. and I've been fascinated fascinated to the extent that is almost disappointing to me how people the quote big people of God who are so quick to lay aside the things that God has said and instead spend time chasing around, spend time bowing down, spend time giving in to the things that's floating around or the things that's being perpetrated in the world vis-a-vis -vis media and all of these other kind of places instead of staying with the word of God. When we believe God, it becomes important for us to trust God and, 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 and find out what it is that he has to say about things that are going on around us. So then, uh, this, this, uh, this, we were uh, listening to this song from the, the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, and uh, they had this selection uh, called... Uh, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. And uh, so then that pushes me to read this Psalm number 121. 
And I want to challenge you to recognize first that this is the word of God. That God whose wisdom, power, and authority reigns over all. Amen. And so I was listening to the woke Can up I with add this. Oh, be go ahead. Before, before you get to Psalm 121. What? Uh, I was reading in my devotions of the other day. Mm -hmm. And Psalm 120, okay. right before 121, talks about uh, the time when David was in, sounds like a, a situation near, similar to what we're in. Oh, yes. He says in, in mm -hmm. verse one, in mm -hmm. my distress, I cried unto the Lord yes. and he heard me. Mm -hmm. And that we were just, I was just talking about distress and what made me distressful. Okay. And then it's just like. There's a smoke screen when you're Ooh. distressed or or fearful or confused, don't mm -hmm. know what to do. Mm -hmm. And many of us, we have to deal with that. What you know, this is in front of me. So how am I going to handle that? Mm. And you uh, talked Wednesday about focus. But here, David, from Psalm 120 to 121, mm -hmm. he shifted his focus. OK. And it was just so great. In his distress, he went to the Lord and just told the Lord, Lord, you know, these people are lying. <laughs> I want peace. They mm -hmm. want war. Mm -hmm. And, you know, oh, God, I'm calling on you. I need you. I need to move the smoke out of, way, mm -hmm. out of the way. And then in Psalm 21, it tells how he got out of the smoke, mm -hmm. the smoke screen, the stuff that mm -hmm. was. Uh, plaguing him and, and bothering him. So then he comes to Psalm 121. Well, 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 let's go ahead and read 120. Let's okay. go ahead and read 120. We can flip it back up and you can catch up real quick. Psalm number 120 at stanza one, it read in King James, it reads like this. In my distress, ah, boy, haven't, uh, that's been going around. In my distress, what? I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. Stanza two, this is what he said to the Lord. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips. And isn't that one of the big issues about yeah. everything going on? Lord, it's gotten so we just don't know who to believe. Yeah. On one time they say this, this group say wear it, and that one say don't wear it. <laughs> this one say stand six feet apart. But that one says it's okay if you're going to buy some marijuana or buy some liquor. You can stand all close as you want. Uh-oh. Excuse me. There you go. Uh, alcohol kills germs. Yeah. Oh, alcohol kills germs. <laughs> ah! Okay. <laughs> and it's a, it's a certain kind of medicine. Okay. Uh, deliver my soul, oh Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue and that's one of the major things that's causing a bunch of distress in people even these days where we are now this is a, I, I had Come i on. was listening to um i actually ended up on daystar and mm -hmm. they were talking about something and they talked about this one person that i had a lot of confidence in you oh, know a yeah. philanthropist and yeah. a good person don't call his name i'm not i'm not might not let us <laughs> They might not want us told, to talk about this guy who thinks saying, that everything is going to be made better by a, a syringe, shot, shot and a shot. But we're not going to mention who yeah. that is. Go ahead. <laughs> but they and told, he got a lot of money, too. But they told me <laughs> what? that he had done a lot of stuff and that uh, Africa had banded him because yeah. the stuff that he was doing was killing their kids. And he, he didn't care because he wanted to, you know, his medicine to evolve into a vaccine so yeah. you know the only way you do that is test it on people so <laughs> anyway so the 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 deceitful tongue so yeah. you know for me i felt deceived yeah i really did yeah. after all of these <laughs> out of all this confidence like mm. oh yes we got somebody who doesn't care about the political side they care about the health side mm. and then come to find out boom same thing yes okay so then stanza three of psalm number 120 what shall be given unto thee or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? Verse stanza four, sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. Mm -hmm. Woe is me that I, that I sojourn in Meshach, that I dwell in the tents of Kedar. My soul 
hath long dwelt with him that hated peace. For I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Is that like flipping through the newspaper? Isn't that like flipping through the news channels? On one hand, some people are calling for peace. On the other hand, they're wanting to have a war and wanting to have a fight and wanting to make a big deal out of whatever's going on. And then so, uh, let me mention this before we go to Psalm number 121. For me personally, and I meant to say this at the beginning also, because I said it in the last uh, session or two we had. You know, we're not sitting up here talking to you about something we read in a book. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about something we heard that sounded real good and we wanted to try to convince you to deal with it. We are talking about what happens in our lives, what we have lived through over these 50 plus years of marriage and the decades of life that we've lived and the opportunities that have been a part of our experience over these decades. And we're wanting to share with you the opportunity of being able to have that kind of, have a kind of relationship with God that is an everyday, right now, relationship that has confidence in it, in the relationship, that will cause your life to not be overrun by fear, to not be broken down by dis distress and despair. So, so can I put this part in for please? here? So in 120, you see how David, he broke, he told God, Mm -hmm. as if God didn't know. But it's important when we're praying, when we're talking to God, when we're going through situations, we need to voice yes. what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times just talking about it and getting it out, you get answers while you're talking about it. Uh -huh. You know, and he, he articulated to God, this is what I'm concerned about. This is what affects me. You know, some, every, some, everything doesn't affect you, but yes. there are some things that personally affect right. you. And you need to know God, I need you to tell me how to feel about this. This, this is the way I feel, but I want to feel the right way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about certain things. So it's good to just, you know, talk to God and say, you know, yes. this makes me angry. This, I want to do this and I want to do that. So our ticket, talk to God and say, hey, I'm tired of stressing about these bills. I'm tired of my kids uh, not getting good education, or I'm tired of, of my neighbors with loud music or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I want this, or you said I could have that. Articulate to God. Yes, yes. Cause, and Because and you, you'll see what he says in 121, is going to like, yes. And in the connection of talking to him, it's important that you believe that he is who he said he is that he is what these verses say about him. And therefore, so when you come to this place of Psalm number 121, then, then it'll become important to develop an attitude, to develop a sense of confidence where we see this is what God said. This is what we believe. God is faithful. He will accomplish his word. And now over these previous weeks, a lot of people have been talking about Psalm number 91, where it said in essence that if there a plague comes or some trouble comes, if to the extent that a thousand people fall on your right hand and 10,000 on your left hand, it will not come near you now now you can either believe that or you might as well walk to the front door open it as wide as it'll go and say come on in mess come on in confusion come on in disease since god can't handle this little cor corona deal that means he can't handle nothing else so we might as well just give it up and quit now but the answer is no. 
God has declared that it will not come near you. So then, then when then I'm I'm pushing for us to have this sense of appreciation from God in Psalm number 121, beginning at stanza number one. I want us to have this to, to develop this sense of 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 uh, of of both have this sense of abandon trust and confidence in God listen at what he says I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills why from whence cometh my help huh my help cometh from the Lord not <laughs> DC M E or S S either. Hmm? My help cometh from the Lord. Who is he which made heaven and earth? And that's a statement. Mm -hmm. Period. My help yes. comes from the Lord. So then you have to f when when something comes up and and say like your check doesn't come mm -hmm. or or you didn't get something that you had expected. Mm -hmm. you don't look at the smoke. Mm -hmm. Look at what God. My help comes from him. So, okay, God, it didn't come in the this mail way. today. But my help is coming from you. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. My help. And you just have to keep saying it. Come on now. Come you know, voice yourself. My is that, help is, that is on. Is that it, realistic? Is that a oh, realistic yes. way I've, I've to done be? It. I have done it. I mean, I mean. Do you really? I have lived it. I mean, supposing, supposing the check it's doesn't come. It's too late to tell me. If uh, the check don't come today, he must, he must be having somebody to pay it online. Uh, Amen. Come on. <laughs> He's an online guy. Yes, he is. Oh. <laughs> the word He's of God. He's an online guy. Yes, he is. Oh, oh. The word of what, God is what? so is so specific. Yes. If we, you know, when when we when we're crying and, and confused, hey, just open it up. Just open it up. I remember one time I was just crying and snot. I had the real snot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, you know, I'm just thinking, go knock me out. I can't make it. Blah blah blah. And I opened it and found, you know, even if you had to go to concordance and find some yes. words. And look, yes. I got to a point where I was reading, and I'm like, is this? Did you really say that? And then finally, I looked. I said, "Is this the Bible? Did I pick up the wrong book? You know, did I pick up a self-help?" But it was just God's word is mm. so specific. Wow. My help mm. comes from the Lord. Woo. End of series. It's my simple. my 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 my. Psalm <laughs> number one hundred and twenty-one, stanza number two, and this 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 provides for us the sense of anchor provides for us the sense of confidence it provides for us the opportunity to develop as it were a position and or a barrier or a defense against anything that's coming from any direction about anything whatsoever my help comes cometh from the Lord, <laughs> period. Huh? Then moves on with stanza three. He will not, not mm -hmm. suffer thy foot to be, re to be moved. He that keepeth thee huh, will not slumber. Mm -hmm. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Okay, can I put this in? Come on. When he says, he will not suffer thee, he made it personal first. Yeah. first. Don't you worry about what's happening in Michigan okay. or Detroit or okay. Hazel Park. Okay. First of all, you're not going to be moved. Uh, so if they get knocked off the earth, don't you worry about that. You are not. It's ooh. personal first. And then he goes and then makes it uh, nationwide. Mm -hmm. Israel. He'll mm -hmm. take care of Israel. But, oh. Don't worry about Israel first. You mm -hmm. worry about you because mm -hmm. he's going to take care of you. Ooh. You and your house. My, 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 my. <laughs> All right, thank you. You make me want to shout, Mrs. Go Scott. ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. <okay. laughs> Stands four. Psalm number 121. Behold, he that keepeth Israel 
shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord, stanza five, is thy keeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Mm -hmm. The sun, mm -hmm. now watch this, his power, shall not smite thee by day, mm -hmm. nor the moon by night. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall preserve thee. How? Come on. From what? From all evil. Yes. Do we believe he it or not? He shall preserve thy soul. Uh-huh. I feel like I want to <laughs> read that again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Lord shall preserve thee mm -hmm. from all evil. Yes, but they said if I cough and get the germ. From all evil. Amen. Hey. <laughs> all evil. That means my kids, if something happened to them, for me, that would be considered all evil. All evil. My bank account, my house, all whatever. All evil. Hey, hey, hey. The Lord shall <laughs> preserve you. Hallelujah. Me. Mm -hmm. You. Mm -hmm. From all evil. And I choose to believe that. Mm hmm. And the last one. The Lord shall preserve don't go out, stay in the house, shut the door, trap yourself with all the air, all the, you know, don't go out, get no sunlight, don't go out, get no fresh air, stay in the house, everybody stay in there together, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in, how long from this time forth, how long and yeah, even, even how forevermore. Forever not just till the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Not till somebody, oh, 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 our state's going to open. Our city's going to, no, no. He preserves mm -hmm. whether they open or not. Yeah, he he preserves us, preserves our lives forevermore. Now, now, now. We got to start to wrap up here a little bit, but we fitting to we fitting fit, fitting, fitting to the commits into getting ready to <laughs> start to wrap up. There was this concept that I wanted to share with you as a principal heart of this particular E word today about staying in faith. Mm. Now we're going to read over there in the Gospel according to Mark chapter five, and in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 8, two very similar stories about situations where there was even a death situation, and yet Jesus declared, when you stay in faith, mm -hmm. staying in faith, even the worst situation that you can ever think of can turn around. Amen. Now, uh, let's, let's quickly go. Let's see. Uh, go ahead and turn to the gospel according to Mark. Go ahead and find that. The gospel according to Mark, chapter 5, uh, right there. And while you do that, mm. so staying in faith means you stay in believing my help comes from yes. the Lord. Yes, so you just stay keep on connected to with stay that. in faith. Just keep believing that and that the Lord shall preserve me. Yes, he shall preserve me from evil. So mm -hmm. just stay with that. Stay with that. Focus on it. Focus on it. Now, there was a, there was a situation Jesus walking along and all of this depends on it, All of it is connected with what you believe about the word of God, what you b believe about the things of God, what you believe about God himself for your personal life. Amen. Now, here's the situation. Jesus was walking along. Some woman came along. She had had an issue of blood for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And you think you got a little 30-day problem. Mm -hmm. 12 years with an issue of blood. Wow, she had to be strong anyway to sustain that to, long. To, to, to live that long mm -hmm. with that kind of situation going on, notwithstanding all of the social ramifications of the 
deal. Anyway, she came along. He was on his way to uh, see about this particular ruler guy who had, 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 had asked Jesus to come to his house. And when he came, when he was going along, like she reached up, touched his garment, she pressed through the crowd, touched his garment, and virtue went out of his body, and she got healed. Mm -hmm. Right? So he turned around and said to her, daughter, uh, what, no, he turned around and said to her, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Okay, so then, while he was on his way to Jairus' house, Jairus' house, this woman stopped and they had this conversation going on. And then while uh, they were yet ready to go along, at verse number 35, it says, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Trouble thou the master any further. You know, might as well quit. Don't, don't bother him any further. And verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue. Said, sh 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 don't say anything. Yes. <laughs> See. He said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid. Mm -hmm. Only believe. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another version. Uh, they call it the, in the New Living Translation. I did some, some translations comparison of this same verse uh, in, 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 in Mark chapter 5. And I also did the comparison in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 8 of this same verse. The, uh, the, out, out of the translation that were on the, the app I was studying, the only one that said, don't be afraid, just have faith, is the New Living Translation. All of the others, in some form or another, use the word believe. Okay? Don't be afraid, just believe. But in the New Living Translation, it said, don't be afraid, just have faith, mm -hmm. okay? Now, well, why is it that you want to point out the business of just having faith? Mm -hmm. Because, number one, he had to have faith in the first place mm -hmm. based on what he had heard, mm -hmm. based on what he had experienced, based on what he believed. He was willing to go to Jesus and ask Jesus to deal with his servant or deal with his daughter, whatever the case may be. Now, here's the place where, before we go to the Gospel according to Luke chapter 8, here's the place of this concept that I, I believe the Spirit of God wants me to help you see and help you understand. I don't know how many of you have had opportunity to consider what a iceberg looks like. Mm -hmm. An iceberg, or ice, is that correct, right? Mm -hmm. Iceberg, the bottom line is, there's a little piece of it that sticks out at the top, right? Mm -hmm. But up under the water level, there's humongous parts of that iceberg, mm -hmm. right? You just see the top part. But underneath, under the water level surface, there's a magnificent, huge, just, just almost like, almost like dealing with a tree. You know, you got the tree up here and all the branches and the leaves and the trunk and all that. That's nice. But when you look under the ground, you see this great system of roots and stuff. Well, I want us to have a concept of this business about faith being like an iceberg. Because that that you can see up on the top is only a glimpse of the whole makeup of the thing up under the water. So then, 
what I want to say to us is this. When I say to you, stay in faith, mm -hmm. I can see stuff going on on the top of your water. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to get you to appreciate is what's going on under your water, mm -hmm. your iceberg. Yeah. If you look in there real close, you're going to find there were times when you just couldn't make it. But God delivered. Amen. When nobody else was able to come to your help, but God took care of the situation. There were times under the surface, the other part of your, the iceberg of your faith is places where you've been reading scripture. And you've heard the voice of God from his word. And you've used the name of Jesus. And situations changed. I mean, everything looked like it was all over. But when you said the name of Jesus, when you told God what was going on, he handled it. And therefore, that provides the other part of the iceberg of your faith so that when Jesus turned and said, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. When he turned and said, hey, don't be afraid mm -hmm. just check out your experience of the iceberg faith that's why it blows me away where christians have been so quick to just throw up their hands bow down sit down shut church don't pray don't go don't lay hands. Oh, don't touch. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I mean, putting rubber gloves on top of rubber gloves. Come on. <laughs> How can we be so quick to do that Amen. when we examine the other portion of the iceberg of our faith? There were times when I ended up laying hands on myself. Come on. Amen. Come on now. There is power in the laying on of hands. It's been proven. It's listed in the scriptures. It's been proven in, well, one person, in my life. It's proven in the lives of others. And so I want to challenge us to don't be so quick to get into fear. Because the system is pumping out fear like it was going out of style. They're pumping out fear in the music. They're pumping out fear in the, in the reports. They're pumping out fear on the media pages. They got fear all over the internet. Can I bring in a Please. point that we, we were talking about this week? Uh, here's the thing, you know, we are intelligent people. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, well, just the other day we were watching this comedy show mm -hmm. oh, that yes. was from 2004. 2004. Now, in America, one of the things that has been so helpful in America is that we are basically a clean nation. Mm -hmm. Even when we traveled, I don't think any nation, even uh, London, no. the, the hygiene level, the cleanliness level, levels in these other countries is not even close to what it is in America. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's one of the things that keeps us healthy, yes. the passing of germs. Mm -hmm. We were watching this movie the other day from 2004, and it was a comedy, just a 30-minute sit-down uh, sitcom. And they were talking in there um, about, and even there was a Bernie Mac movie, and they were talking about how this, this guy wanted to go to a ball game, mm -hmm. and he had really good tickets, so he wanted to make sure he didn't get a cold. The flu. The, the flu, because the flu, the flu was, SARS yeah. was going around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he was like washing his hands, spraying everything, putting on a mask, and all this. This was in 2004, the same thing. So the thing that bothers me is that we believe more in what people say then we do fundamental principles that mm. come from the Bible. Mm. Cleanliness, um, washing your hands. The, the, it's, it, to me, it's more important to wash your hands and watch what you touch than it is to wear a mask. Tuh. Because if, you're, if you can have, if you don't wash your hands enough, 
you push the mask down, you just wipe the germs all over your face. You know, da, 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 da. And it, it was my husband, we were laughing about how when we go out, it seems like your face now, it just itches, you know, itches you wanna and touch you want to touch. You know, and we're not doing it. We're in the car with each other spraying hands because your face itches like, oh, you know, you get the heebie-jeebies. So, but it's, if we would just quit believing, you know, they said that, um, in London, here in Washington, D.C., here's where we got to be smart Christians. Mm. Don't be Christians with unintelligence. Mm. OK. The pharmaceutical, the biggest lobbyist group in Washington is the pharmaceutical industry. Duh. We remember back in the 90s when we noticed they start tearing down stuff and putting drugstores on every corner. Uh. And we said, uh-oh, something is up. Mm -hmm. And sh because like, why are you putting all these drugs? There, there wasn't a new disease or anything. But the pharmaceutical company is the mm -hmm. biggest lobbyist in Washington. What do lobbyists do? <laughs> they influence the people who are quote unquote elected. This, yeah, and, and decision makers. And they need money to fund their campaigns. Duh. Okay, so if you want to be reelected, you need the money to fund your campaign. Now here she goes Where's, very political again. But I, this has got you gotta be intelligent. <laughs> okay. The pharmaceuticals are tell, telling, okay, I'm gonna give you this much money. The second biggest lobbyist is the oil company, mm -hmm. which is where? In Texas. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is the gas company. Mm -hmm. Those three which is all about greed, is those three organizations or groups are, are really controlling the government. Mm. And so when people get so caught up on about, oh, they're going to do a vaccine or they're not going to do a vaccine, oh, they're going to get a cure, they're not. Listen, our faith better be in Ooh. God. Amen. Because how, if you're a good pharmaceutical company, you're not going to come up with a cure mm. real quick. Mm. They came up with a cure for, or, or something at least to contain HIV quick. Mm -hmm. Breast cancer, been breast cancer for Ever. half <laughs> of a century. Mm -hmm. So, Why not? just be smart. Duh. If drugs are good in their place, but our help, we've got to be focused, our help comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. People who had this last thing, this corona, some of them could not even get tested mm. because they were saving it for another group. Now, that sounds like a brave new world. <laughs> the book, mm -hmm. Brave New World. Mm -hmm. So you might, they might have a shot or whatever, but you might not get it. Mm -hmm. So your help must be coming from the Lord. He will do what it takes to get you what you need regardless. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Uh, eat. Amen. So then, therefore... Uh, and then I, and then you got political, and I'm not, I'm, I'm I'm just going to follow this just up a little bit because you said be aware and have knowledge and understanding. Woo! Did you ever take time to read some of the fine print that's listed on some of the medicines that they want to give you about this and so? Well, let, let me say it like this. Let me say it like this. Because when you read what's in there, it'll blow your mind in terms of what you are putting in, in your, your own body. Yes. I had a doctor tell me in relationship to, I was dealing with, he was dealing with me about kidney situation and thus and so on and this and that. And he said to me, every pill has some side effect. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then therefore, mm -hmm. You have to choose, choose which, which side effect mm -hmm. that you want to tolerate, even though the pill deal is not going to cure the situation. Amen. You have to decide if you want to tolerate this evils. particular <laughs> side effect mm -hmm. in order to uh, prolong the situation, etc. Et and we so, thank God for medicine. Amen. It amen, has amen, its amen. place. But, but we ha cannot put it above right. what God says. But the says. bottom line is, so then therefore my attitude, for those of you all who know me, my attitude is, well, whoa, if this is not curing me, then I don't need to have to be wrestling with this side effect. I choose to trust God. Amen. And, 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 and I want to make this 
proclamation. I want to make this announcement to you today. I will never get the coronavirus. Amen. Amen. Oh, you, shh, you shouldn't say that too loud. The devil might hear you. I want him to hear me. Never. Never. It's not God's plan for my life. It's not the blessing that God has in store for me. God says with long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation, his deliverance. So therefore, my attitude is, I believe God. I trust God. You look under the iceberg faith of Stanley Scott and Carolyn Scott. And you're going to see supernatural healing situations. Amen. You're going to see money show up. <laughs> you're going to see deliverance from God. Over these decades of our lives, he has never failed us. Amen. And he will never fail you when you believe him and trust him. And so our challenge today, we're wrapping up, our challenge today is for you, us, we, to believe God's word, to study it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In order to stay in faith, you have to have faith in the first place. And the way you get faith in the first place place is reading, believing, receiving, acting on the word of God, period. Yes. And as you do that, God will show himself. He will manifest himself. He will confirm his word with miracles, signs, and wonders. That's what he said. That's what he will do personally in your individual. He will not suffer you to be lost. He will not suffer you to have this situation. He will not suffer any evil. He will keep you from all evil. And the declaration that I want to give to you today is to stay in faith, get in faith, mm -hmm. refresh your relationship with God, mm -hmm. reboot your connection with him, reread and read and reread and read and read and put into action his word in your life in the name of Jesus. And I promise you, he will not fail you. Put your trust in God. Make the declaration. And sometimes, uh, even one of the, the other songs was even in the night when your mind starts wandering and you get these pressures about giving up and that you need to say out loud, my help comes from the Lord. And just by virtue and by the power of you making that declaration, mm -hmm. it will move that depression off of you. It will move that fear out of your life. It will move that anxiety from you. And you say, well, I did that and it didn't happen. We'll keep on doing it. As a matter of fact, don't stop until it moves because God said that it will move. <laughs> he All right. resist the devil and he has to flee. He will. So just come against him with the word of God and it will it will work. All right. Work Amen. for you your house, your family. Just do it do it, do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well listen, we have to wrap it up for now. Thank you for being on board. Thank you for being on this video with us. Thank you for being on this call. We bless you with the love of the Lord, with the life of God. I want to now introduce you to the gospel. The gospel is found in the gospel according to John chapter 3 verse number 16. In there we find the wonderful expression 
of the fact that God loves us so much. At verse number 16, when you read it, you'll find these words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Did you hear that? Should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this gospel points us to salvation. Salvation is found in Romans chapter 10. We use verse 9 for the example of our particular session in time with you together. When you read in verse 9, you'll find out this is how you receive salvation. This is how you activate God's power in your life. This is how you become a member of the family of God. How you become a child of of Almighty God. This verse at Romans chapter 10 verse 9 reads like this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in his heart, in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Period. And so I want to offer to you the opportunity of praying this prayer together. I, 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 um, I at some place along the way in this message I wanted you I wanted to be sure and let you know I'm stuck on the word of God I mean I'm just, that's just it it's just it for me uh, and therefore whatever situation you're in whatever attitude you're with whatever concept of what's going on around you God is able to connect with you through all of that and bring you into relationship with himself and once he does that all of these things that we've talked about in these verses and all of those scriptures that are in the word of God that apply to your life they will activate they will work for you even in the midst of what appears to be impossible situations God's word will work so let me invite you I don't know where you are I don't know who's there with you. Uh, parents, be sure and pray with your children, your young people, and be able to make sure that they're safe, that they're born again. Because time is winding up, and uh, there's more to this life than just what you see around you. It's important to us be, for us to be in relationship with God so that when this life is over, and the next life comes, we can spend it in the presence of Almighty God. So if you're willing, go ahead and pray this prayer after me. Say this out loud, wherever you are. Say it in your own personal way. God in heaven, I thank you for today. I believe that your word is true. That your word is true. You said you love me. You said you love me. You sent your son Jesus to die for me. You sent your son Jesus to die for me. You said when I believe in him. You said when I believe when I him, believe your love. When I believe your love. I will not perish. I will not perish. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is your son. Is your son. You put him on the cross you put him on the cross he bore my sins he bore my sins he received stripes on his back he received stripes on his back to obtain healing for me to obtain healing for me he shed his blood he shed his blood to cleanse me from all sin to cleanse me from all and sin. therefore i can be and therefore i can be righteousness righteousness, righteousness in you in you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Thank Jesus. you, Father. Thank you, Father. I receive. I receive. Jesus. Jesus. As my Savior. As my Savior. As my Master. As my Master. I make Jesus. I make Jesus. The Lord of my life. The Lord of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You will guide my footsteps. You will guide my footsteps. In the path of righteousness. In the path of righteousness. For your name's sake. For your name's sake. And you will order my life. And you will order my life to fulfill the plan you have for my life. To fulfill the plan you have for my life. And I will spend the ceaseless ages of eternity. And I will spend the ceaseless ages of in eternity your in your presence. Thank you. 
Thank you. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm saved. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or if there's any way we can help you, or any way we can pray for you, contact us. Send us a text message. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 81, Warren, Michigan, 48090. Also, if you want to support the ministry that we do or so into what we do, we have a text to give number. It's 313-825-6018. That information is on our Facebook page and you can find it or uh, text us, email us, in some way communicate with us. We will lift you up in prayer. We're doing that anyway. But if you have specific questions and areas that you want us to deal with, let us know that. And we'll deal with it in an upcoming video or broadcast in Jesus' name. So God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. If perchance uh, you've prayed that prayer and you need a good church, you really need one to help you learn and grow and be able to serve and receive the blessings that God has in store for you, Go to one that's a good Bible-believing church. If there's not one near where you are, again, we're located at 25,000 North Chrysler Drive in the city of Hazel Park, Michigan. Now, we got a whole lot of road construction stuff going on, but we believe and trust that God will guide you. He'll get you here. And when you get here, we'll love you, we'll teach you, we'll share the blessings of God in your life and help you be able to enjoy serving what it is that God has in store for you. God bless you. Share this on your page if you will. Check out our website, stc.church. You can find more information about salvation and ways to connect with us on our other social media sites. This particular video will be uploaded to YouTube. We've got other videos in there too that can be a blessing to you. Sometime you can go check those out. Thank you for being with us today. Thank my precious wife for being with us as well. We love you, babe. You look pretty oh. sharp today. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Bless you, bless you. We'll see you next time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.